they asked Imam al-Baqir when the ayah says, hold on to the rope of Allah and do not disunite. They asked him, what's the rope of Allah? He said, the Quran and Al Muhammad, salawatullahu wa salamu alayhim up. Because someone asks me, what is the hadith that Muslims, Sunni and Shia can use to unite? There's only one. In Sahih Muslim, the Holy Prophet said, I leave, he stopped at a watering place called Khum, in Sahih Muslim. He stopped at a watering place called Khum, Ghadir, Khum. He stopped there. He said, people, I leave behind for you two weighty things. This is in Sunni books and Shia books. So it's a great point of unity. I leave behind for you two weighty things. Hold on to them. You'll never go astray. The Quran and my Ahlul Bayt. Do you know how many, it's very sad. Do you know how many Imams of mosques of Ahlul Sunnah don't tell their people this? You know what they tell them? Quran and Sunnah. What have Ahlul Bayt done wrong to you for you to, to, to lie? He says, no, no, no. It's Quran and Sunnah. Bukhari doesn't say Quran and Sunnah. Muslim doesn't say Quran and Sunnah. Nasa'i doesn't say Quran and Sunnah. There's only once Malik in his Muwatta has a hadith where he says Quran and Sunnah. And we don't reject Quran and Sunnah. But Rasulullah on the day of Ghadir, what did he say? I leave behind for you the Quran and my Ahlul Bayt. Why do you think these Mawlanas in New York or Mawlanas in Washington or Mawlanas all over America or Mawlanas in Pakistan or in Iraq or wherever why do you think they say Quran and Sunnah? Because they know if they say Quran and Ahlul Bayt, all of Ahlul Sunnah will come towards the path of Ahlul Bayt. Believe me, they know deep down. And it's sad, it's sad that you put your fame ahead of putting the truth of Rasulullah. Sahih Muslim, Google it tonight. I leave behind for you the Quran and my Ahlul Bayt. The Prophet said, hold on to them. You'll never go astray. And then they asked Rasulullah, aren't your wives part of your Ahlul Bayt? He said, my wives are part of my family, but it's not who this is revealed about. This is revealed about those members of my family who cannot take zakat. Yes, can't take sadaqah. And then after that, they asked him, who are your Ahlul Bayt? He said, the sons of Ali. Ali and his sons. Aqil and his sons. Ja'far and his sons, Abbas and his sons. Look at that as a point of unity. Quran and Ahlul Bayt, that's the point of our unity. There is no other point. I'll tell you the story, it happened to me in Saudi Arabia to conclude. I was in Saudi Arabia, whenever I go for Hajj, I love going to the uh, Wahhabi bookshops, yes? I go to the Wahhabi bookshops and I, you know, in the Wahhabi bookshops, I think the books are great because there's a lot of great books on Quran. You know, our uh, brethren there in Saudi Arabia, very strong on Quran, nothing on Ahlul Bayt, nothing. And us, excellent on Ahlul Bayt, nothing on Quran. So we were there, I was in the bookshop, and of course I'm wearing this really creased up. And I've always got someone with me, and always in the Hajj groups when we take them, there's always someone who fears being near me in the group, because they know I'm going to take them to the bookshop, and they have to stand with me for two hours while I read every book and then leave. <laughs> so I go downstairs, I'm in the Wahhabi bookshop, there's a Pakistani, Afghani, and a Sudanese. This sounds like a joke. I think. <laughs> Pakistani, Afghani, and Sudanese, they're there. So looked at me and I'm looking at the books and he said to me, where are you from? I said, I'm from Iraq. He said, Shia? I said, yes. So what did he do? He went. He started beating his chest. He's like, I'm like, yes, it's better than suicide bombing. At least I only harm myself. <laughs> so he started laughing. I started laughing. It was good conversation. You, know, you could tell that they were just migrants who were working in a bookshop. He said to me, brother, I want to advise you. Everyone wants to advise me, yes? He said, brother, I want to advise you. So what is it? He said, you have to hold on to the Quran and the Sunnah. I said, hold on to what? It's the Quran and Sunnah. I said, where's it written? He said, what do you mean? So where's it written that it's Quran and Sunnah? I said, how many books you got in this bookshop? He said, 7,000. I said, if you find me today in any of the six sahihs, Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmidhi, Nasai, Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah, if you find me, it says Quran and Sunnah, I'll become in front of Kaaba right now, I'll join Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. He said, then what is it? Please understand what happened. Please bear with me. He said, what is it? 
I said, Quran and Ahlul Bayt. He said, okay, look for it. Show me now. Bukha, Muslim, Sahih Muslim, I could see it, but the problem is Sahih Muslim, the 1981 edition, the writing is small. 1997 edition, the writing is bigger. Now I've got the hadith number in my head, but these sizes of books can differ depending on the publisher. So I pick out hadith number 2230 and it said something like, you know, I think something like donkey meat is haram or something. And then I look for another hadith and it talked about garlic or something like that until eventually I found the hadith. Zayd bin Arqam stopped at a watering valley called Khum. Ghadir means spring, oasis. He said, they asked him about what Rasulullah said. So he said that the Prophet stopped at a watering valley called Khum. And he said, oh people, I leave behind for you two things. First proof, Ghadir Khum. Second proof, last sermon of Rasulullah was at Ghadir Khum, not at Hajj. Third proof, I leave behind for you the Quran and my Ahlul Bayt. Allah is my witness. And Mullah Hassan, if he listens to this, will be a witness as well. He knows very well what happened. This Indian person, the Pakistani person there, he said, get me a chair. It's the moment you see when someone realizes something's been hidden. He said to me, get me a chair. He sat down, he was in shock. He, he said, this is Ahlul Bayt next to Quran. It doesn't say Sunnah. I said, I didn't want to say anything because I could see he's in extreme shock. Saudi walked past. And he walked past. He said, what are you discussing? I think he overheard. So I said, we're discussing Hadith al-Thaqalain. So what, what's your conclusion? I said, it says Quran and Ahlul Bayt and Sahih Muslim, not in Shia books. No, no. He said, no, it's Quran and Sunnah. I said, no, no, it's Quran he said, I say it's Quran and Sunnah. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> At that moment, I saw the meaning of the ayah. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ السَّافِلِينَ In his own eyes, I showed him Ahl al-Bayt. And he looked arrogantly at me and said, We say it's Sunnah. What are you going to do about it here? Sometimes... People see the haqq of Al-Muhammad in front of them. Whether they accept it or not is up to them. I showed him in Sahih Muslim. In Saudi Arabia. Not in Iran, not in Iraq. And he just looked at me and said, so what? What are you going to do about it? And he said in Arabic the exact words, غصباً عليك. And only the Arabs there will know what that means. What does it therefore conclude? Quran and Ahlul Bayt is what unites the Muslims. The more the Muslims will hold on to these two, Rasulullah has promised will never go astray.